It's interesting. One thing that I think we should say, we've been doing a lot of the a lot of work with the Emerald Necklace Conservancy and the conversation we've been having with their president who's a planner um, is that she's so frustrated by the fact that many Bostonians don't understand that the Emerald Necklace is an infrastructure system, like it was designed to manage mm -hmm. flood water and and the effects of urbanization when Boston was growing really quickly. And it's interesting because it is a, an entirely constructed landscape, but it appears to be natural, pastoral, the English kind of picturesque um, mm -hmm. imagery. And so in some ways people forget about it or, or that the kind of um, well, it, it don't appears appreciate like it was always it as there a, as yeah. a construct. Whereas, yeah, the, the more infrastructural environments, the highways, they're, they're so clearly are, you know, um, built by humans and um, are not going to fit in into the environment. And so that's, that was something I think early on working with the salt pile was um, we, we felt that it's pretty obvious you can't try to compete with that scale or, or make something that makes these things go away or mitigates their impact, but rather you kind of just have to work with what's there. And it, interestingly, a lot of the, the kind of post-industrial projects like the High Line and, and so on have kind of um, mainstreamed mm -hmm. the industrial aesthetic, like, aesthetic <laughs> yeah. and imagery so that that even starts to help support or, or make the the, um, the active industrial landscapes more palatable. Well, it's, it's, we've, 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 we've experienced even, even in the short time, time of our career yeah, over 10 that, years uh, that that's become something that... The weird like marketing of, let's say, even typical condominium developments to sort of embrace an edgy industrial mm -hmm. aesthetic makes people more apt to be able to accept actual infrastructure and industrial systems yeah. in their city. We've even been in meetings where people make those kind of visual comparisons, which is a pretty interesting and maybe unexpected result of some of those um, landscapes is it's actually making people kind of reappreciate, let's say, rail lines, like aesthetically even. Mm -hmm. um, or the types of ecologies that happen uh, along. But right no, we've, it, it, it is a really challenging thing. We run into this on some of our, like a lot of our park projects, for example, where we want to plant the landscape with habitat rich native plantings mm -hmm. for example for things like wetlands and then people come in and say oh it looks weedy and then demand that it actually gets mowed down yeah. which eliminates all of the habitat and you realize yeah so much of it is about I bet, yeah, perception I would say that of things actually found the perception of more sort of natural looking landscapes is something that is more controversial to the communities that we work mm -hmm. in than the industrial relics themselves mm -hmm. And, yeah, we, what is the article that we always refer well, to we as were, the ecosystem? Well, yeah, Joan Maysow, the landscape architect, yeah. wrote a great piece called uh, Messy Ecosystems, Orderly Frames, mm -hmm. which is about how we, it's... It's, it's the, contextualizing. So those much of what we do in cities is, again, try and hide the things we don't like about ourselves from ourselves. Yeah. And that operates on so many scales that the oil refineries go far away. The sewage goes down into pipes where you can't see it. We mow the plants so that they seem controlled and orderly. We sterilize things with toxic chemicals. All so that we don't, some of it's so that we don't have to confront the parts of ourselves we just don't like. Um, uh, and some of it is a, probably just a strange fiction that we've inherited over time through marketing and aesthetic regimes mm -hmm. that we think are preferable now. We now know how much of those are premised on really bad environmental concepts, mm -hmm. global inequity and global justice questions, and honestly even just toxic chemicals yeah. to make things sterilized and, or to make them neon green lawns, you know, mm -hmm. and so... That's part of the same thing is in the same way that we have to work against the uh, 100 years of, let's say, problematic infrastructure and development types. There's 100 years of associated perceptions and mentalities that have come out of those infrastructures that need to be changed and how to kind of reinsert them into cities in ways that people can kind of accept. I mean, we, we really run into situations where we'll have fields of wildflowers with butterflies and bees, yeah. and people are demanding their mowed down because they're weedy. And, and 
it's a really, and you try and put up signs, for example, to explain the yeah, <laughs> ecosystem. Does, it actually helps. I mean, I think helps. that the kind of like communication of intent is really important in a landscape that doesn't appear manicured. So it's a, it's a funny thing. That's cool.